In this video, I want to show you this super cool book. This book has a nickname. People call it Wizard Book. It's called Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs, and it was written by Harold Abelson and Gerald J. Sussman with Julie Sussman. You can see why it's called Wizard Book, because it has a picture of a wizard on the cover. Or maybe it's a sorcerer. Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. You notice my copy is signed, so I'm not sure if every copy is signed or if that's a real signature. So if you happen to have this book, please let me know if your copy is signed. This book is dedicated in respect and admiration to the spirit that lives in the computer. Cool. Let's take a brief look at the contents. So this book basically covers the fundamentals of computer programming. It starts with building abstractions with procedures. Then it goes on to building abstractions with data. Modularity, Objects, and State. Tons of topics in this book. It's got so much information. Metalinguistic Abstraction. Computing with Register Machines. And then you have a few more topics here. One of the coolest things about this book is that you can actually watch lectures online that correspond to the contents in this book. In particular, you can actually watch lectures given by the authors of this book. And the lectures are incredible. They really, really bring the book to life because you're watching lectures given by the people who wrote the book and they're from the 80s, which makes it even better. It's just really fun to see how computer science was taught in the 80s. This book uses Scheme, which is a dialect of Lisp to explain all of the concepts. And I just gotta give it a whiff. Oh. You can see there's plenty of examples of code throughout the book. And this is a perfect book for someone who wants to learn key concepts in computer programming. Again, this was used at MIT to teach the Introduction to Computer Science course for several years. I don't know if this book is still used today at MIT. The book has really fun characters throughout. Names like Alyssa P. Hacker. If you say that a different way, that would be a Lisp hacker or evaluator. If you say that differently, it would be evaluator. Let me tweak it. Let me tweak it. And Lewis Reasoner, who was a loose reasoner. The authors really tried to make it fun. Oh, let me show you something super cool. Even from the very first page, this book is incredible. We are about to study the idea of a computational process. Computational processes are abstract beings that inhabit computers. As they evolve, processes manipulate other abstract things called data. The evolution of a process is directed by a pattern of rules called a program. People create programs to direct processes. In effect, we conjure the spirits of the computer with our spells. Indeed, this is a wizard book, which makes it so cool because this is the Math Sorcerer YouTube channel. So <laughs> you can become a computer science sorcerer with this book. And I just, it's so cool. And I will leave links in the description of this video to the lectures that I have been watching on MIT's OpenCourseWare. And they're links to YouTube videos and they're incredible. I think it's super awesome. They're, they even have cool music with a wizard and the author talks about how the programmer is like the wizard or the sorcerer and the processes themselves are spirits that live inside the computer. So if you already know programming, you might be asking yourself, why in the world did the authors choose to use Lisp as the framework for their discussion of programming? Here the authors attempt to answer that question. If Lisp is not a popular language, why are we using it as the framework for our discussion of programming? Because the language possesses unique features that make it an excellent medium for studying important programming constructs and data structures and for relating them to the linguistic features that support them. What I'm going to do is after I make this video and post it in the description, I'll post a link to the book. I'll post a link to the free video lectures, which are absolutely incredible. And I'm going to post a link to a program that I downloaded on Windows that's totally free that will let you get started with Lisp right away. So if you decide to buy this book or maybe you just decide to watch the super awesome videos that the authors of this book created, you can actually learn Lisp right away. And let me actually just show you some Lisp, just some really basic stuff, so you see how it works. It's a little bit different than some of the other languages. Here are some basic examples of Lisp. You notice that there's a parentheses 
a plus sign, and then the 137, and then the 349. That basically adds the numbers, 137 plus 349, and the result is 486. This is called prefix notation, so it's a little bit different than postfix, which is what we normally use as humans. Here is an advantage of this prefix notation. It's that we can use one plus sign, and then we basically add up all the numbers. 21 plus 35 plus 12 plus 7 is equal to 75. And you can actually practice all of this on your computer when you install Lisp. And again, I will leave links in the description so that you can get started with this right away. The previous owner of my copy of this book actually signed this book and stamped it, but I purposely omitted it from this video because I wanted to respect his privacy. I'm pretty sure he's a computer scientist. But what I can show you is some of his notes. So I found this inside the book. You can see he took some notes here and look how small the writing is. Pretty cool. One of the things that sets books apart from other books, besides the fact that they are clear and concise and they help you learn whatever you're trying to learn, is do they inspire you? And I think this book really provides a lot of inspiration for people because of the way it's written. You know, everything is very clear and his idea of, you know, these spirits that live inside the computer and, you know, the cover of the book having a wizard or a sorcerer. And if you add to that the incredible lectures that you can find online, it's just a really fun experience. So I think this is perfect for anyone who wants to get into programming. Now, the fact that it does use Lisp, in my view, is kind of a downside. Lisp is not really a popular language nowadays. Most people, when they get into programming, you know, they usually go to something like Python. For example, I have a book here. It's called Doing Math with Python. And I bought this book a couple weeks ago because I wanted to see what kind of stuff it had in it. And it's really basic math. It's math that, if you're watching this channel, you probably know how to do a lot of the math that's in this book. So it's really just about programming some basic math techniques, basic math algorithms with Python. This is probably something that is more useful if you're trying to learn a programming language because Python is used more often. But if you're just learning for the sake of learning, I think it's really cool to go back and explore an older language like Lisp. To me, it's more interesting, I think. Another thing I think is really cool about this book is that the authors of this book have PhDs in mathematics. That's right, these are math people. And so when you watch the lectures, they actually give examples with mathematics. And it's just really cool. It's really cool to see math with computers. There's something about that that just really, really appeals to me. And I got this book because someone recommended it and I'm super happy with it. Anyways, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time. I just wanted to talk about this book and how cool I think it is. I love the cover. People call it wizard book, obviously because there's a wizard or a sorcerer on the cover. I mean, look at that. It's like a claw or something. Anyways, it's the wizard book. I hope you've enjoyed this video and check out the book. And if you don't check out the book, at least check out the lectures. They're totally free and I'll leave links in the description. I think you're gonna think they're absolutely awesome. Every time I watch the lectures, I, I just, I don't know. It's really, really motivating to have those lectures that go along with this book. Until next time, good luck and take care.